floods. 70% of Pakistan was underwater at one point or another in the recent last two years. How does a country respond to that when much of your infrastructure is subject to that kind of disaster? And if we look at the realities of migrations of people, by 2050, 70% of the world's population is going to be living in an urban environment. It's one thing dealing with a disaster in a rural situation where you can move people, relocate people fairly quickly, or even use airdrops to provide food. What do you do in a city of 11 million people suddenly struck by a disaster? The, the complications on so many levels, politically, socially, militarily, are really difficult to assess very easily. What are some of the possible mitigation plans that we could potentially put in place so, since we know that this will be a reality? Well, at one point, and if I think in terms of my own career, preparedness was not a major item on our agenda. We were conditioned to think in terms of response. But now, as you correctly state, the imperatives of that response are getting beyond our response capability. So the only way to deal with that reality is to put much greater emphasis upon preparedness. In a city like New York, for example, I grew up in New York, and seeing subways underwater was just beyond my imagining. But the lower part of Manhattan Island was inaccessible to the northern part of the city. How do you anticipate that? There are plans, in effect, that repli replicate much of what has happened, say, in Amsterdam, where they built protective devices, where they've relocated essential parts of the city's functioning to higher areas. So in short, preparedness is a part of our equation that was, in the past, only thought of occasionally. So uh, this is an interesting aspect. We have um, known for a while the importance of uh, doing preparedness and actually that uh, a dollar spent on preparedness may actually save or be equivalent to six to ten dollars spent on relief. And yet, when uh, having the opportunity to raise funds for preparedness has traditionally been hard, right? So that's uh, the traditional argument about um, the difficulty in uh, investing in preparedness. But as you point out, perhaps this uh, change and shift in a in priorities or, or uh, the challenge associated with the future disasters may it actually allow us to make this transition. Well, I, I think that's a very good way to put it. In fact, if you look at the numbers, the U.S. alone spent $168 billion in the last two years in response to disasters. That is a lot of money. That's a lot. And $55 billion of that was spent specifically in terms of response and the rest was spent in terms of flood insurance, recovery, and so forth. So if you transfer that expenditure to preparedness, then the numbers change very dramatically. Yes. Um, are there specific ways for us to think about how to implement these efforts in a systematic way? Uh, things that you have thought about? I think a response to that occurs on more than one level. For example, if you look at what individuals can do, if you look at what small communities can do, schools and churches and so forth, the ability to deal with the situation within a small context, for example, Red Cross are using apps, what they call first aid apps, to teach people what to do immediately, how to get water and so forth. So that's part of the whole educational system. And those communities that respond best to disasters are those communities that have incorporated preparedness strategies into the basic educational system of the children that, and the families and the parents. That's where it all begins. In a larger level, if you can convince governments when they do their annual budgeting to say, all right, we are going to allocate X amount of money to infrastructure, Part of that allocation needs to be specifically focused upon contingencies. Can you imagine trying to evacuate a city of 11 million people? Oh, I cannot. It's beyond okay. comprehension. So what are your alternatives in terms of keeping people secure? This is the kind of thinking that has to be paid more attention to. Uh, but but I'm, I'm wondering if there is a, you know, a way to engage people in a, in a constructive 
manner so that we can uh, do things more proactively, more systematically, and more holistically? I would argue that we have to have a staged approach to okay. build a constituency for change. And without that, it, it'll be too easy for interested groups to stand in the way of change. And for example, you mentioned the possibility of creating jobs. Now, if those jobs in a sector are created in relation to the ability of, the, of a city, for example, to respond to a disaster, then you have a constituency built in, which does two things. One, it increases the job security for a lot of people, but it also enables you to function better in response. On the other hand, if the approach is taken that creating jobs is really the major target, then you've defeated the possibility of dealing with the effects of climate change or the cause of climate change. Mm -hmm. And much of the debate in with, within many states right now is that there are still people who are denying the relevance of climate change. Sure. Mm -hmm. So you have to acknowledge that there is a discussion, yet at the same time implement preparedness structures and strategies which make sure that people survive in the event of a disaster. So when you think about a staged approach, do you, um, you know, is that staged approach starting from the micro to um, more macro levels or from a local to a regional and, uh, you know, federal level? I mean, just um, well, your thoughts on those. That's a very good way to put the question because if, for example, I don't know whether you're aware of the initiatives that Mayor Bloomberg in New York is proposing. He's proposing a huge plan to prepare New York for a disaster response. So in a way, that is a combination of the macro and the micro because if a city as large as New York can set the way mm -hmm. for other cities, then simply by doing it, you've accomplished and reached communities at all levels. Right. I mean, in this case is a top-down drive to, to increase resilience of the, the city. It's a top-down, but it's a very public right. I mean, drive. The, and it, if you were to do it in a small town, most of the country wouldn't pay any attention. But if you do it in a city which dominates the economy of a, of a major country, then everyone else can take note and learn lessons. Okay, this is very, very interesting and very good. Um, Roy, I wanted to thank you for your, uh, um, your participation today, your insights. Um, this was uh, very, very valuable. Thank you. By insights, you mean sharing my opinions. Huh? Sharing your thoughts <laughs> and opinions on these topics. Yes, thank you.